Hello everybody. I've decided to do another video on my Fortress Farm tried and killer setup. This time I'll be doing it in survival on a server that I'm playing in. So you can see here uh, the setup that I've been using. Um, I've already started making a couple modifications for 1.19 and thought I would bring you guys in to show you kind of what those are and uh, a few of the things that I've learned in the process to uh, hopefully help you guys out. So let's get going here. So I have the system set up that has two minecarts for each spawn spot. I've got two spawn spots here on what used to be a walkway because there's a chunk border that crosses the middle of it. You can see here the mobs are slowly dying in the powdered snow, but they're not aggroing to me at all. Uh, that's just the trap doors here that I've added in. Uh, that keeps the blaze from constantly burning up the powdered snow when I'm walking around. Now I did try and put some catalysts in here to kill the XP, uh, but visually I just didn't want to cover all of the, my glass and the ceiling and the walls and everything with buttons uh, for when the golems would be killing all the magma cubes that uh, shoot out of this here. Uh, so for now, I'm keeping it with just the campfires underneath, and that burns 90% of the experience, and that'll be good enough here for now. Um, I had tried to put some frogs inside here to deal with a couple of these little guys that can get stuck down there, uh, but there just was no way that I could find to put frogs down here uh, with a campfire set up and and have them either not hop up into the minecarts or just ignore the magma cubes, period. Um, if I do switch back to the catalysts, I can put a frog down there, trap him in a minecart, and then he'll deal with any of the little guys uh, that can end up down there. But for now, um, I'll just be putting some extra powdered snow down here. And that should help deal with those frogs uh, or I'll let the golems free because they can hit them through there once I have this finished being built um, maybe raise the redstone up a little bit more that way the golems and the magma cubes can freely uh, pathfind to each other and attack each other so I'll show you here what I didn't in the last video as far as finding this and then we'll get into building one of these setups so I've marked out in this whole fortress here all of the spawn spots and you can see here I have a chunk border that crosses it so I have two spawn spots but on this one there was no chunk border crossing it so I only have the one spawn spot there this is how I had started with locating all of the spawning platforms I took iron bars or you could use glass panes and I covered the whole walkway at head height. Once I had one spot found, then because of the chunk border, I knew I had the second one right there and I could mark it out. And then, you know, until you get a farm built, you get a nice little manual method of capturing and killing them. So that that is the kind of old reliable way of finding your spawning spots uh, for a fortress farm. There are methods of how to do it in creative. Um, I got impatient placing all the iron bars. So at one point, I had just come up here and I had waited to see where a blaze or wither skeleton would spawn. And once it spawned, I'd fire an arrow or two until I marked the spot where it spawned from. And then I could go down and place a slab on it to mark where they spawn there. So those are a couple things that you can use or do in a vanilla game to find your spawn spots. Uh, there are also resource packs that you can find on MCPEDL um, that will put down a particle whenever a mob spawns. Uh, and so those can be very helpful as well for finding your spawn spots in a fortress. Uh, and then there's uh, also packs that you can find around that'll show you your chunk borders and show you your spawning sphere. So from my 
spot up there. Uh, all of these raised ones, although I'm thinking maybe not that one after all, will be inside the spawning radius on my Sim 4 world. Um, I'm probably hurting myself a little bit by giving myself a floor and a full build here. Um, I could take advantage of the Sim 4 world and let the magma cubes just fall out of a despawn range. Uh, because my despawn is just right down here. Okay, so now we're going to see how the farm works. So you can see I have my golems down there with the frogs and the lays. Now the golems will kill the magmas. The frogs are going to help once it gets down to the little magmas. I think I will end up having to put one of each frog... Uh, of each color at the f with each golem there or more just to make it a little bit faster and then I got a few allays to pick up all the frog lights and the magma creams uh, so I'll still need to get that in but if we come over here and we stand on our pressure plate that I've got over here we'll be able to see it work in here I got the big guy that shot up the top there He'll see this golem soon and wander over. Got the little guys that can occasionally take up the space, but that's what the powder snow was there for. It doesn't take too long for them to clear out of the way and start picking up the rest of the mobs. You can see even with even with some magmas taking up a decent bit of the cap, we're still moving pretty quickly through the mobs here. Uh, so I think once I finish adding the rest of these, I probably am going to have more magma cubes in here than I can handle, and I'm going to start having mob cap issues. Uh, I'll probably add some more golems to counter that, uh, but at some point I'm going to reach the limit of what I can handle uh, where... I'd be better off just digging out the rest of this fortress so that the magma cubes can fall fall down and despawn. Okay, I've got my visible glass pack installed so I can see all the borders of my glass to make my life a little bit easier. Now I should have built this one before I built this one here. Uh, I'm thinking it's gonna be just a little bit harder for me to get everything into place, but we'll just proceed with it this way anyways. So let's clear this out here. I did already put my hoppers in underneath. Or some of my hoppers in underneath. There we go. Campfires in. I will put these out for the time being and we'll come by and light them again later. There we go. Okay. What? One nether brick there. Wooden fence there. That way the two of them don't touch each other. glass. Start putting that in. Okay, let's get our skeleton skulls in here. Oops. Swift sneaks a little bit too fast, actually. Okay. And this skull here we're going to take out later and replace it with powdered snow. But we need it for now just to get our minecarts in, and I found adding an extra skull up here uh, does help make sure the minecarts go in nice and easily. Get our chain block there. Chain block there. When we go to relight these, I'll add some string on top of here to kill the smoke like I've done in the rest. Now we can start getting our rails in. Add 
pass down. Rail. Couple fence posts in there. Ass. Rail. Minecart. Minecart. that minecart all the way in? Where's that minecart all the way in? Uh, I'm going to want to swift sneak off for this. See, I do have to just barely nudge it. You don't want to move too fast here. Just the barest nudge. And they fall in, and we're good to go. And so we'll need to pick that skull up. These two fence posts. I went and got ahead of myself. Because it would have been a little bit easier had I put these two trapdoors in first. So now, oopsie. Now, I can't put the trapdoor here because of the hitbox of that minecart. So we will. these in with the piston as well. Okay. Get that out of the way for the time being. Grab my rail back. Those ones in the sides. Push those in. I will actually just put all these blocks in here for now. Just get them all ready. Okay. Piston ready. breaks the one with a skull that I had up there. So now we're ready. I didn't have to remove it, just pushing the glass in took care of that for me. Uh, yep. done now. Okay. Cap that off there. Go up, cap that off one more time there. Gotta remember to remove that skull down there. But I need my trap doors. That direction I know is east. Hinges are facing east, not in the direction where my trapdoor or tridents are going to be against the block over here on the south. Okay. No reason to put those in there, but just for symmetry's sake, I am. Actually. And then, I'd like my trapdoors to throw tridents against. Trapdoors in here. Keep yourselves from being visible before I get carried away. Uh oh. What did I do wrong?
Well, I guess we're going to start again. Okay, so now I've undone a little bit of a mix-up mess up here that I've had. And we're ready to just resume. So I'll finish clearing that out of the way. Now we're just about to put the mine carts in, and I have these trap doors already in place. So you can have your glass along the back wall here. These lower trap doors, doesn't matter which way they go. But if you have them in now, then you don't have to push them in with the piston later. These upper trap doors, they do have to have the hinge facing to the east, which would be over there, or to the south over there but because of the orientation that I'm building this I don't want them against that wall there so I'm having the hinges off to the east okay so I put that back there again to keep the mine carts aligned and then this one here just to help me out as I'm pushing them in so I don't accidentally push them too far alignment posts in there Two in there missing one mine cart because I burned it but I will get this one all aligned and ready to go first okay Probably when you're building this, you're not going to want to have the hopper set up or the non-stackable filter running uh, like I do right now, because I burned a couple mine carts over the process of making some changes and modifications here. Right. Drop that down, now it snaps to that bottom rail, so you always got to break the top one first. Drop that one down. Move my sneak three pants there and just give it a gentle nudge. Something that I've learned is to leave that alignment skull, not this one, leave that one down there until you're sure that the mine carts are in place after you pushed everything else in. I never had a problem with this before. That was because I've always pushed the glass in from the end this way. Now I've learned something doing this, pushing the glass in from the sides. There. See, now it's shoving that minecart back. I didn't notice that the first time around. Now, all of my my alignment skulls set up there. All the glass is in. Huh. I have two mine carts in the same place. That's not going to work. I have two of them in the same spot like that, then only one of the mobs will actually get hit by my tridents when I set them up. I need to give them a bit of separation. There we go. So, again, push them in from the top. I can't push them in from the sides. It's always a way. There we go. Now they're pushing against each other properly and holding each other in place. That's what I wanted to see. Now it should be safe for us to remove this guy. 
they're not going to go carting around. Powdered snow in there. We can get our trap doors set up here. So that the mobs aren't going to see us. them in real nice here. Get our two trapdoors just to make it easier so we can throw our tridents from down here without having to be above where it is. Make sure they're towards the inside because obviously your minecarts are over here, your minecarts are not over there. Okay, and then do is power this. Uh, I said I was going to use glass for this, so we will do that. And... other two tridents over here earlier, so we'll get those thrown. Okay, those are good. I'm just gonna fill my inventory so I don't pick them up again. Go up here. Cap the top here. There. Now we're good. Now when I head back up to the top, we should see that one working. Certainly see the magma cubes are spawning from it. One second. I'm going to turn this pack off so you can see. Okay, so you can see I've got a couple wither skeletons in there. I'll zoom in so you can see a little bit better. They're just chilling out. Okay, so anyways, that's module built. I've only got about 12 more to go here. Four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. more permanent fixes that I'll need to do here. So that, that note block there, that's just temporarily set in place. 
storage is all temporary. Uh, I'm going to need to up the ante with my non-stackable filter. Much bigger storage because this was constantly filling up even before. And then add in proper sorters for all the magma creams and frog lights that I'm going to be getting. And that's just with doing a little bit of mucking around here. Playing around with uh, how I'm going to incorporate some of these things. So I'll be moving my note block off into the center here. Get it all signed, lined up with the sorter. And I think I'll finally have this fortress farm as done as I want it to be, other than just doing some decorating. So now I have finished building all of my little trident killer setups at all of these spawn spots that I had laid out. A um, little, little bit of decoration work left to do down at the bottom, but I will bring you guys back here now and we'll go over uh, what I finished up here and a couple little uh, changes that I've done uh, to accommodate the fact that uh, unlike the previous world, I have a floor in here and I have to deal with these magma cubes that are spawning. Um, if you care about getting the best rates that you can out of this farm, don't put a floor in. Just let the magma cubes hop off the side and go and despawn somewhere. As you can see, uh, even though I've raised the redstone up and tried to get it all out of their way, this magma cube is Edgar on that golem. And he's going to hang out there until he despawns, even when they, even when they do break up. I've occasionally got uh, my full mob cap taken up, just out of the little magma cubes that break up, um, which is why I have frogs all over the place. So I'll show you kind of the full scope of it all here. I've got 27 different spawn spots all over the place. So I've got four of them over there and three of them right here just packed in right tight to each other. Let's go down and have a look. So you see I've got my golems and my frogs. Uh, and they are tied in place to keep him so that I don't they don't end up all in one corner or wandering off. Um, but they're under the floor so that it's not a hindrance for any of them wandering around and attacking each other. Uh, and one of the changes that I made is it used to be that these two spots had been dug out and I just had some buttons there. And that allowed the small magma cubes to see the iron golem and come out here rather quickly. Uh, however, I started getting some leads in my overflow storage. Uh, so the frogs were, well, being probably idiots with their hops and ending up inside uh, the campfires and burning up or possibly even getting clipped by the minecarts and then dying in the powdered snow. Uh, and the LAs as well kept wandering underneath here somehow and getting stuck behind this trap door and I'd have to pull them out with leads. One of them was even able to get stuck in the minecart uh, which was uh, real tricky to actually get at him with the lead but I was able to pull him out without having to rip the whole thing down uh, because they won't die to powdered snow they just heal too fast for that. Uh, so it sat there occupying the minecart the whole time. Uh, and you'll see I've swapped out the block that I was using for... i get my hand back. Swapped out the block I was using for the spawn spot. Um, this is something that I had originally dismissed uh, because structure spawns and the magmas associated with structure spawns will still spawn on here. So this doesn't stop 
magmas from spawning when you're in a fortress. But uh, I did realize uh, with some discussions on the uh, Tech Rock Discord server that this would stop my magma spawns, any magma spawns that I would get because of the biome. Uh, so any any reduction in magmas is going to be a good thing. So I've swapped out all of my spawn spots for some nether wart blocks here now. And I've also raised my redstone another, another block higher just to make it less likely or, or basically impossible for magma cubes to hop up on top of it and hang out on top of there just circling around the iron golem below them uh, and some of my uh, solid blocks here that I had to spawn proof above it to keep the uh, zombie pigmen from spawning I've replaced the fence gates I was originally using with more trapdoors, again, just to make the large magma cubes make it easier for them to fit between my uh, trident killer setup here and the ceiling to make the way over to the golems. I eventually will replace all of the frogs that I'm missing so that I've got one of each color with each golem, like I do over here. Um, and that's mostly just going to be so that I get a nice, um, consistent balance with the frog lights that are coming out of this farm. So let's go down and have a look at my storage. I did decide just to make everything go through a shulker loader. So that's all down here. It's got it all laid out and labeled. And you can see, I don't really need a shulker loader for my frog lights. So there's not that many of them that come through. Um, and I'll share, I'll share the name of the designer for this shulker loader. Um, and if uh, they do have a YouTube video on it, I'll post that as well. I did make it just a little bit taller in a couple places so that I can see inside of the shulker boxes uh, and then also uh, up above so that I can have two item sorters uh, to process the items faster because just a single hopper line input into this was not going to keep up with all the spawn spots that I'm using. Uh, so the little bit of AFK that I've done since finishing my storage system. That's the uh, wither skulls that I've gotten so far. Uh, it's been a, a couple hours, but uh, we have very frequent restarts and there's almost always a lot of people online. Um, so there's, I know this farm is, has not been running to its potential and I've not AFK'd very long at it, but uh, really, this is where I'm getting all of my bones for bone meal. Uh, and then any furnace fuel that I want. I get plenty out of this here as well. And then my, my overflow storage. Uh, so I don't actually have sorters set up for the frog lights on the second side up there. Uh, but there's very, very little that's coming through here now. The way that I've got it set up. So you can see my sorters. Don't have any of the frog lights for the second sorter line. And I've got my non stackable filters here. And then this repeater on. Uh, what is that? Three ticks? That's just metering and controlling the the item flow so that nothing skips past so I don't get uh, a bunch of non-stackable skipping past or other items that skip past their sorters. Uh, and like I said, 
The farm is faster than a single hopper line can go, even without me slowing this down. Uh, so I need two hopper lines that the farm is split into. So everything on that side will go into here. Everything on that side will go into here. And then still again, because there are just so many swords that come through this thing, uh, this quarter of the farm runs through this non-stackable item filter, and then that quarter runs through that non-stackable item filter, so that I don't start backing up up here again, even having the farm split into two. And again, I'm just controlling the flow of items through the hoppers, so that nothing skips past that sorter. So this is kind of what it originally is. I had some blocks in here just to hide the different colored blocks that I had. Um, but I've decided to actually just put a whole ceiling in to cover this thing up. And that's that's really why I hadn't gone with the slime block launchers, because having to do that, uh, this would have been rather large complicated setup down here to move the items uh, over into a single line and then carry that in line over to the centralized storage system. So now let's talk a little bit about some lag control. Part of the reason why I have my iron golems on leads and not in centralized locations for the magma cubes to run to. Um, in designing my magma cube farm, my frog light farm that I have over there. Uh, I noticed that if I lock the golems in place, um, magma cubes, when they were targeting them, would really start to trigger that pathfinding bug that can generate a whole lot of lag. Uh, but by allowing the iron golems to move around, that seems to forestall that issue. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really triggering the pathfinding lag with the magma cubes. And I've got a lot of extra golems in here as well, just to to help kill the magma cubes as fast as possible. And then uh, the other bug that I wanted to be certain I wasn't going to start dealing with is having hoppers pushing into a chest that is full of shulker boxes. Um, now, the original design of this farm had droppers pushing into these chests, and I might still do that as well, uh, but you'll see these hoppers down here, the ones that are actually dealing with the shulker boxes, uh, these ones are locked all the time. So that's, that's going to prevent that from becoming an issue if these were to fill up. Um, and these hoppers wanted to try and push into a chest that was full of shulker boxes. That can generate a lot of lag, um, which is why I went with a design that made sure that these stayed locked at all times. Before I let you guys go, I did want to show you some of the other packs that I had mentioned earlier that just help with spawn spheres and with uh, uh, with trunk borders as well, uh, and finding the locations of of the spawn spots. Uh, so there'll be a little bit of uh, cutting in and out here as I swap the packs around because they're they're not compatible with each other. But I'll just give you a quick demonstration of a few of them. The first one here. Um, I'll show you a couple things by Blue Shadow, uh, and it's available on uh, MCPDL. So I'll share the link to that in the description. Uh, but to start with, armor stand with redstone torch, and you can see it starts uh, building in particles that show uh, the Sim 4 spawning and despawning range. So here we've got our inner circle. So things will start to spawn here, and then they will despawn over here. Uh, visually, some of the other uh, packs, like uh, Raven Mad Hatters or Foxy No-Tails, it's a little bit easier to see, doesn't have quite so much gaps. 
uh, but they are built completely different. So this is a particle, uh, which is why it took so long for it to render in, because it had to place all of them. Um, but the advantages to this one is, uh, you'll notice it hasn't disappeared on me. Uh, and you'll see that with the other packs, um, where you're limited by the distance to the armor stand, uh, whereas that's not the case with these particles. Um, this one here also is uh, uh, correct vertically for certain. Um, and I'm, uh, I do know that some of the other packs are not vertically correct. Um, I haven't tested them all, but I, I do know that this one for certain is vertically correct. Because uh, I noticed with some of the other packs, it just wasn't making sense with what I was seeing for mobs spawning, where they would and would not spawn. Uh, but this one fit things correctly, and it, it definitely doesn't look stretched vertically like some of the other ones are. Um, you can also toggle this one if you're on a larger simulation distance. Uh, so in the settings, you can toggle it up to 128 blocks uh, and get a larger sphere as well. But you can see here I'm just, just barely coming down to include these two spawning spots. Um, and this one here... Uh, if I had tried using it as soon as they got into the minecarts, they would have been despawning. Uh, and then I can also hand that armor stand a rocket to see our chunk borders. Uh, or I can just hold the rocket in my hand. I believe um, if you get a newer version of the pack, um, I think I had seen him talk about how he was going to have it only be in the offhand and not in the main hand. That way it doesn't show up when you're flying. But works best in F5 mode if you walk around. And here I can show you how the chunk borders here were splitting up the walkway. And that's why we would have that second, that second spawn spot. Okay, so I'll go switch the packs over, go to something safe here, and I'll switch the packs over uh, to one of the other ones. Okay, and I'll switch it over to one of Mad Hatter's packs here. Um, so this is uh, a pack that has a whole bunch of other features in it, but one of them being if you hold a rocket in your offhand, uh, you can see some chunk borders and so that's only in the third person view you see here if I put the rocket back in my main hand it doesn't work I'll head up to our armor stand up here Okay, after being a fool for a little while and then realizing I had the wrong pack installed. Here we go is Mad Hatter's pack with his spawn spheres. So you can see his gives you horizontal to the armor stand. Spawning range. So anywhere within this purple spawn and have a look at it down here again we've got because it's armor stand based it disappears when you go too far away and compare its vertical height I believe this one here uh, does appear to be slightly lower and I'm assuming that's because it's uh, not adjusted for being based off of the foot of the armor stand uh, versus the head of the player. Uh, so you might want to have it sit one block higher, but uh, so this is, a, this is anyways another option you've got.
and we can still still have our trunk borders here. So now there's a whole lot of other things that this pack will do, uh, but you'll have to go and check out the information that Mad Hatter has uh, just regarding what different items you have to give the armor stand in order to see all the different things that it does. Okay, now we've got Foxy's markers uh, turned on here in our re resources. Uh, so, if you give an armor stand a banner, any banner, doesn't have to be a pillager banner. You can see he's got his spawn sphere and despawn sphere. But you'll notice that the Actually, we'll have to go inside to see that. Uh, but as you, as I move away here and I'm looking away, the armor stand itself is unrendering, which is why this starts to, to disappear. So you kind of have to keep looking towards the armor stand in order for it to stay active, and then you get far enough away and it disappears. Uh, so that's going to be most every other pack that's armor stand based. You can do a lot with them with poses, but they do have this distance limitation. You can see uh, this pack, it is much larger than it says my spawning range is. Now some of this I think is just uh, possibly a vertical offset uh, for starting the, the player center at the foot versus at the head, uh, but definitely uh, when I was working with this farm, I had been trying to I tried to make use of these Couple spawn spots over here, and I was never getting anything spawning in here even though this pack did say That it worked so uh, horizontally uh, It is accurate, but it does appear to be stretched um, Vertically uh, I should probably go and make sure that I have the more recent one installed. I do believe um, that he's been updating packs and had to update them a whole bunch for, for 1.19. So it might just be that I've, I've got an outdated pack. Um, but this, you know, not gonna hurt for you to, if you're using the spawn proof, if you're a little bit on the large side, uh, it's gotta be safer for you that way. Uh, but this pack can also do chunk borders. So it's a little bit nice here. You got a single chunk border, and then you get two chunk borders in every direction, and then three in every direction. I believe that's three in every direction. Now, obviously, this one gets a little bit hard to move around in, but if you really want to lay out a whole bunch of grids, uh, having that extra distance can be kind of handy. And then you've got your directions, you've got your distance from the armor stand, days in game. Time of the day, FPS, and then another coordinates, overall coordinates to help you with your portals. There's a lot of stuff that Foxy has in here, and some of it uh, requires experimental features. Um, that's that's one of the more common packs for finding your 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 uh, chunk borders and all of your spawning sphere as well for a sim 4 range. Okay, and then uh, just one more quick switch here. Okay, and so now this pack here is one I wanted to show you that has uh, spawn spots. Now there's a couple of them on there. Uh, this one is part of the packs provided by uh, useful particles packs by the Blue Shadow. Um, so you can toggle this to be all sorts of different categories of mobs. You can see uh, these are my magma cubes as they've been dying. Uh, they're creating spawn eggs. Uh, and there should be spawn eggs inside here with all of my structure spawns spawning. But uh, I believe just with the density of how many blocks I've gotten there, I'm not getting my spawn spot showing it here. So we'll go outside the farm and you can have a look at 
where those at some of these particles here. There we go. So highlighting this corner, it's spawning on this block, uh, but it spawns on the northwest corner of this block. So you can see that uh, as things are spawning, you can see you know, where you need to spawn proof or where your spawn spots are inside the fortress based on the spawn egg that's showing and where it's located. And yeah, if you get blocks on it, you can make them go away. So there's a, a few different packs out there to help you with that. Uh, but the one I'm currently using is the one uh, in the useful particles by the blue shadow. Okay, I hope you liked this uh, farm at any rate. Um, I've taken up probably a better part of your your evening with this video, so I do appreciate any of you who did watch it the whole way through. Um, I'll go through and I'll add all the timestamps so that you can skip me rambling. I did try and cut out most of the rambling that I had done in making this video. Uh, but bye for now, and I'll see you guys next time. I think that's it. Hello, please.